Hey, Jonathan here at Top Saw. Today's video, I'm gonna go over how to change out a table saw blade for a dado stack so that you get nice, tight rabbits and dados every single time. We're gonna do it on the saw stop. Okay, I'm changing out the table blade saw. Uh, for a dado stack and it's not too complicated, but you do have to run some test pieces Before my hands ever go near any cutter. I need to lock it out in two places I turn it off on the machine and then the breakers over here and I lock it out over there On this saw stop, there's a, a hex key bolt to hold the face plate in On that on the other saw stop, it's a pull lever that's nice to do on this is if you bring up the depth of cut pretty high you don't have to reach as far down in there there's a magnetic door that's just for dust collection you just open that up and I actually have a data stack in there right now um, but I'm going to change the overall thickness of that data stack the, the wrenches for the table saw are on the side here It doesn't actually have to be that tight on there. Make sure the back is off when you're doing this. So if you drop anything down there, you won't lose it. So there's a nut. And then there's a compression washer on there as well. And as you tighten this down, there's a little detent in here so that it actually kind of compresses on there. So that holds the blades on there. When you pull this thing out, you cannot drop these blades and you really can't stack them. If you drop them, you break these teeth off and then I gotta get rid of the whole blade set. You can't really put these teeth back on. So even when you stack them, you don't stack them on top of each other. These are chippers right here. And then these are your two blades. There's, there's an A and a B, okay? So um, here's a chart right here. I think we're going to 13 16 so I look on my chart here, here's 13 sixteenths right here. And then I need A, C, four E's and a B. So I'm gonna take my A, my first chipper here. Those teeth have to come towards me, so the cutter's coming towards me. You also kinda of wanna inspect them to make sure there are no cracks in them. So I go A, and then in the box here, if you can't, there, it's kind of written on here. I wrote it on a Sharpie there, so I wrote a C on there. But if you can't read it, you could also use a caliper to check the width of the tooth. And then there's a C. Again, that cutter's coming towards me. And when I stack them on here, I make sure the teeth are not stacked on top of each other. Otherwise, they'll kind of wobble around. So that's A, C, and then I think it was four E's. This is an E here. Again, I'm being really careful not to drop them because I really don't want to break those teeth off. So there's a C, an E, a second E. These things are stacked in between here so the teeth aren't sitting on top of each other. There's a third E. And then here's my B blade on the outside, this side out, and it's also my teeth are coming towards me. I don't know if you can see that these alternate, so there's a left hand peak on there, a flat one, and a right hand peak. So I have them all stacked on there. Unfortunately, I can't get that compression washer on there, so I'm just gonna put the nut on. When I, when I tighten these up, I have to make sure none of the teeth are stacked on top of each other.
So I got it pretty tight with my fingers and I'm just double checking that none of my teeth are stacked. You gotta tighten this up pretty good. So it's good. One thing you do have to check with this, with the standard table saw blade, you need a certain clutch mechanism on here. And then with the dado stack, it's a different clutch. I won't go over that. I, I have the dado clutch mechanism in there. And then the gap is about a credit card between the blade, the tip of the blade and that. So you want to check that gap here with the credit card and make sure it's gapped correctly, which it is. I won't go over the clutch mechanism at all. But know that you can buy a separate clutch mechanism for the data stack. So now I got that data stack in there. I check my nut. Um, none of my teeth are stacked on each other. I clean this up a little bit. My face plate hooks on the back. Goes back in. This is screwed back down. And then don't leave this stuff just laying around all over the place. Again, let me just double check that. Here's 13 sixteenths. I have an A, a C, one, two, three, four E's, and then my outside plate. So that's it there. I'm going to do one cut right there and test the, the fit of it. And if it's a little too tight, I could put in one of these shams in between the blades. And they're not going to have teeth. I mean, they're, you got to check them with the caliper. Um, but some of them are like 10 thou, 5 thou, and I think a 20 thou. Shim. So if it's too, fi too tight of a fit, you just take it back apart and put a shim in there. It is kind of a little complicated. And there are different thicknesses shims. But I think I'm going to start right here and see how that goes. you got to be really careful because there's no kick or splitter on there. So i got to be really conscientious of both kickbacks um, and cutting myself. Let me bring it down. I don't really want to take off too much with it at any one time. So I can regulate that by dropping that down and doing multiple passes. So, so the way I do this is I'm going to bury the blade. That's why I don't have a splitter on there. So I got to be really conscientious. Turning on the breaker. Turning on the saw. Safety has to be number one. I really need to think about what I'm going to do before I do it. The, the blade's pretty low. So um, I'm not taking that much wood out. I always use a push stick no matter what because the blade is going to be hidden under there. So the last thing you want to do is run your hand like this. You can't see the blade and run it into your thumb. Okay. I'm really flush up against the fence and I'm holding it down hard. <laughs> Here's my dado, and then I think this is 13 16 and you can see it's a pretty good fit. Yeah, it's a pretty good fit. That's about what you want. It could be just like a hair tighter. So that right there is a dado. If I want to cut a rabbit, I do not bring the fence up to that blade and scar up my fence. Either I put a sacrificial fence in here, or I do it on the outside. If I cut a rabbit like this. Or I could clamp a sacrificial board on here, which is just as good. And then that's how I cut a rabbit right there. So really, you need to go slow, think it out. Don't change that blade unless you check with me first. You, have, you absolutely need to double lock out before your hands get to any cutter. Um, the teeth don't get stacked on top of each other. All those cutters come towards you. Okay, be safe.